Up to now, we've mostly looked at binary relationships, relationships between pairs of entities. It's perfectly reasonable to have ternary, three-way relationships, or even more if that's what's appropriate for your schema and it models the real world well. So let's look at a bit of a variation of what we did before uh, with the ternary relationship and see how it changes things. So here again, we have a weak entity set that's dependence, but now it's connected into what's gonna be a ternary relationship set. So we have this relationship set covers and every dependent is connected via the covers relationship set to an employee and an insurance policy. So we have a separate entity called the policy, okay? And if we wanna say that a policy is owned by just one employee, then we'll connect policies to this entity set like so. We'll have an arrow that says each policy participates at most once in this relationship set. Well, specifically, how does it participate? What we're saying here is that each policy has at most one employee comma dependent pair. Which seems a little weird, right? In the real world, you wouldn't want an insurance policy that can only cover one child. You might have many children. And so this probably is not the schema that we want to capture. Instead, we might want a schema that looks more like this. We're gonna have a design with two relationship sets. Dependence, still a weak entity. It's gonna be connected via a beneficiary relationship set to a policy. So every dependent has exactly one policy that they're connected to. And that policy is in a relationship set with employees called purchaser. Every employee can pur purchase policies. Every policy has exactly one employee that purchases it. So now the dependent is a beneficiary of a policy. There may be many dependents on that policy. An employee can purchase many policies and they can decide which dependents go on which policies, okay? But each dependent's on only one policy and policies belong to exactly one employee. So you can see that there's some design decisions that are tricky to be made here in figuring out what's the representation of the real world with respect to which entity sets we should have, which relationship sets we should have, and what should be the constraints on those relationship sets. Things get tricky even on fairly small schemas. And I would encourage you to look at this diagram on the lower left and make sure you think through all of the constraints. So look at all the bold edges, look at the arrows, and be able to tell yourself what exactly those constraints are saying about this case. Make sure that you understand that because that's a good way of testing whether you really understand participation, key constraints, and weak entities. Let's look at another example of binary versus ternary relationships. And in this example, unlike the last one, the ternary relationship is doing what we want. So let's start with that on the upper left. We've got a contract relationship set that connects parts, suppliers, and departments. So there's a contract which has a quantity of a part that a supplier is providing to a department. Okay? Departments are contracting with these suppliers to get so many parts. So that's our simple ternary relationship set. And there's actually no binary relationship sets that you can set up between these entity sets to get that semantics. Let's try. So let's look at the one in the bottom. We have that suppliers can supply parts, right? We have the depart that departments need parts. And that we have we also have that departments can deal with suppliers, okay? But this doesn't really connect up the facts just because a supplier S can supply a part and department D needs that part and department D deals with supplier S. That doesn't mean that D actually gets P from S. It might be that D gets some other thing from S, but it gets P from somewhere else. Okay. So there's really no way to tie these pairwise things together into a tight contract. There's also no obvious place to record quantity in this lower uh, ER diagram. The quantity is not about how much the department needs. It's also not about how much the supplier can supply. And it's certainly not about how often the department deals with the supplier. So it's not really clear where we would store the quantity of parts that are actually in the contract. And so you can see these multiple binary relationships down below really don't capture the same information as the ternary relationship above. We need the expressive power of both binary and ternary relationships to say all the things we might want to say and we'll also have to think about very carefully which of these we need and when.